Hi guys, enjoy me in today and we're going to be doing something slightly different. Obviously most of my videos, as you probably know, I do like to fish a lot of pearl method feeder, but today's all about the bomb. Bomb's usually associated with colder months to be honest, like bomb and corn does catch a lot of fish. But if you look around it, we're definitely not in winter anymore, warming up and fish are definitely on the feed. And bomb's one of them that can be probably overlooked more than anything. And when they're being hammered on the method feeder throughout the year, it's a good tactic to turn to. And even before, you can lather that bait in, put your pellet amongst the others and away it goes. Hopefully, by watching this video, I'll be able to put more fish on bank for you on the bomb. So first of all, bomb fishing. What actually is it? Obviously, we're not actually fishing with bombs, as you might think. But don't know why it's called a bomb. It's just a term that gets used in the match world. And it is actually a straight lead. So as you can see there, a bit of lead, 20 grams that is, and a hook length, that is it. That's all we're fishing. This is on the, the ICS system, but I'll run through that a bit later when I show you the rod and everything else. So literally, the aim of the game is to cast this out. It's on a clip. Hit the clip, plop it in. And as you can probably tell by now, there's no feed around that. Literally, my bomb's out there with a pellet on the end. That is it. So this is when this bad boy comes into play. You've got pellets. So I'm six mil pellet on hook. Feeding sixes probably feed five or six that's it at a time and you've got to be as accurate as possible and flick your bait over the top so a bit of catapult work comes in here like that over the top of where you are and obviously the more accurate you are the more bites you're going to get so it's wonderful getting used to your catapult like I say tight your group your pellets put yours in the middle and you're likely to get a bite so it is a method that we use for carp and F1s mainly. Obviously the bigger the bait you use, the bigger you fish. So for carp I'm using 8, 10s, 6s for big F1s and smaller carp. And then even drop down to 4 mils and 6s on the hook for small F1s. But you can also use it with corn as well, which is probably more traditional what it's known for. At the minute there's some carp in here, some big F1s, so we're fishing 6 mil pellets. Fish on. Look at that bend in the rod. Lovely. It's all it takes sometimes. Putting a bit of bait around where you've been placing your feed. And once they get competing and picking them pellets up, it's game over to be honest. Little rattle on tip. Obviously we're fishing tightish to an island, so it's not it's not going to give you a great good wrap round because it ain't got far to go to be honest so you're just going to get a little rattle on the tip goes a bit slack you know there's one on nice action in these rods lovely rods these are putting up a bit of a scrap under the tip oh. In the net. Oh, it's come out in the net. Just take the hook out. There we are. I'll give him a quick hold up. Put my rod down. <laughs> nice little F ones. Look at them. Lovely little fish. Pop that back get a new pellet on and chuck out and see if we can catch another so we're just fishing a, a band so i'll just slide another exactly the same as what i'm feeding another six mil pellet into the band so we're on clip straight back out Down on rest, a couple of pouches of six millies in and wait for it to all happen again. Catch one more, then I'll go through rig and everything that I'm using, equipment, rod, all that stuff. Oh, they were a bit pathetic then. 
it's important to get your feed over over to where you're fishing obviously that's the reason the fish are there no other reason is you're going to get a bite unless you get a lucky one every now and then but you need to make sure you're deadly accurate with that feed over the top of your bomb and it'll just keep going round <laughs> you see that then slight little rattle like i said we're fishing quite close to them islands so it's not often that you're going to get a full-on wrap round like you are in open water but they're on indications are indications when it when it moves and you know it's definitely not a liner a strike worst thing that can happen is you miss it you come back recast so i'm gonna get this one in and i'll move on and show you the rod and the reel and everything like that so i'll just play him nice little left one there we go he's in the net i'll have a quick look at him drop my rod down I thought it'd come out then, it's not. It's only a little one, but they all count. Look at him. Nicely hooked. It's like that. Undo that, drop it in. Lovely fish. It's getting back and now we'll go have a look at the rod then. So, I'm going to give you a quick run through the rod, the reel and the rig and everything that I'm using. So, starting off on the rod, 10 foot superior brilliant rod obviously commercial all round fishing little snake lakes like this obviously up to about 30 40 meters i'd use one of these really good rods reels got a centrist 420 on there with six pound sinking feeder mono obviously i want it to sink because we're on the feeder loaded up to brim lovely down we've got the ics system so this is an interchangeable system so at the minute we're fishing a bomb Literally, that just slides off. If I want, I can slide a method feeder on there, hybrid feeder, banjo, whatever you want. That back on. It's a bit hard doing this one handed. <laughs> Put the sleeve back on over the top, and that's ready to go again. That's on a inline setup. Obviously, fishery rules, most fisheries, commercial fisheries, say that it's got to be in line, so if I were to break, that would be off, and the fish is only trailing around the bead. So fish safety is paramount. And to that, we attach our hook length, which is 017 down to a size 16 KKM. And we've got that on a band. So that's pre-tied, 30 centimetres, obviously. We want to fall through the water. Simple as it gets. Now let's chuck it out and get another one. There we go. So exactly the same as before. Put it down, bit of feed over the top and wait for the tip to whack around or drop back, whatever it decides to do this time. Bang over the top. Couldn't have placed them much more accurate if I'd have cupped them in to be fair. There we go. Load of fish there there is. See movement on the tip. It won't be long now before it's flying back round and we're into another one. There we go, fish on. Simple as that. It's all about getting that feed in dead accurate over where you're casting in. Obviously you can have a little area, I'm not expecting you to hit the same spot every single time but as long as you're in like a metre squared sort of area, it's where you're looking to drop your pellets over the top, keep them as tight as you can. Cuts down on the amount of liners and foul lookers you get, because believe it or not, you can still foul look them on bomb, even though everything's pinned at bottom. Bring this one round, probably a nice F1 again. Lovely fishing. Oh, no, little carp he is. I'll take that back, carp. Look at him, nicely hooked in the top lip. Look at that, lovely little fish they are. I'll slip him back and get another one. 
So it's important when we're bomb fishing that we have regular recasts. There we go, that's in there nicely. We want regular recasts because we're fishing that 30 centimetre hook lengths. So when it hits the bottom, obviously your bomb goes through, you've got 30 centimetres of hook length behind it. And that's when you're more likely to get bites just as it hits bottom, especially this time of year when fish are following your pellets through water, it's bottom and goes round. So I'd never leave it longer than 10 minutes when you're fishing for carp, five to seven minutes when you're fishing for F1s. So then I'll put a couple of, half a dozen pellets in, fire them over, put a couple of lots in, and then we sit and wait for a bite. There, put, went on island then ones. Oh, that was an indication then. There, so we sat, trap set, sit waiting obviously i'll give it five minutes and then recast and it's all about it's getting into that rhythm and you get to know when your bites are coming as well so if you're waiting three four minutes for a bite i'd leave it five minutes if you're getting most of your bites after two minutes there's no point waiting up until five six seven minutes for a bite when you know most of your fish have come after two minutes so i'd give it three three and a half minutes reel in and recast and more than likely you get it just as it hits bottom it'll settle and go around indications there so there's fish there at minute I'll give it a couple of minutes and then I'll put some more pellets in a couple of minutes recast I'm coming to the sound of them pellets hitting the water as well so it's good just to keep putting that bit of noise in let's fire a couple more pellets in gonna go around you're not putting a lot of pellets in each time like five to half a dozen something like that five or six keep flicking them in and see just from the tip movement that there's fish over there Recast. I feel like I should have had one by now, so let's reel in and recast. So let's get one more and then I'll wrap it up. To be honest, I've not got too many pellets left. I had a lovely day's fishing. Plop that in. Down on rest. Look at that. That's all I've got left. You can get through some pellets when you're doing this sort of fishing. Lovely day it is though. Pop these in. Oh. Getting a bit later in the day now, I'll give them another another pouch. Oh, I thought that were on then. Is it on? No. Just recast though, it won't do any harm. There we go, it's right in the spot is that one. It's on the dance floor as we like to say. Let's think that line. Oh, <laughs> landed on one's back. <laughs> it's sort of tip jiggling, I could feel it. A bit too close for comfort on them ones, I think. There. them pellets in again. Oof, oof. lovely day it is nice warm weather been after some for a while there we go fish on 
good tactic to use in matches is this with to be fair do not take long to put big weights together especially if the calf involved but I think this is a an F1 it's coming right in behind him yeah nice big one look at this lovely fish to end day on I've had a right nice time to be honest hope you've enjoyed the video as always like and comment subscribe and I'll see you on the next one let's get him in look at that coming over the net nice big F1 Let me. Drop that off. Woo! It's going to be a bit lively now, isn't it? There we go. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.